Hey, it's 8 o'clock, so we're going to go ahead and get started. I'd like to go ahead and introduce the folks on stage, and we'll have one more joining us this morning. I have uh, Kirk Johnson. He sits on the uh, Hospital and Voluntary Services Committee with me. Jim Shuey. Wanda Jenis. And Katie Geppinger. Katie Geppinger is the supervisor of voluntary services. She works with me every day. I don't know how she puts up with me, but she does. So I'll give her credit for that. And then we're going to have Bill Ballman joining us. And everybody in here probably knows uh, Bill Ballman. All right, so this morning we're going to talk about voluntary services. And we're constrained to an hour. And I know at the end of my seminars, we normally kind of flock up here and ask a lot of questions. Uh, there's another seminar that comes on right after me at 9.15. So we're going to have to get out of here so they can get in and get set up, OK? And I do have to leave. This, uh, the site today for a little bit to go make a special presentation to a local person here in Atlanta. So if I don't answer your questions right after this seminar, please get with me throughout the convention. I, you know, I'm, I'm always out and about, and I'd be glad to answer your questions. All right. Our voluntary services staff consists of myself, uh, Katie Gepiker, who I just introduced to you, Brady Griffin, many of you have talked to. She was a correspondent but recently was promoted to be my assistant. And so we're glad to have Brady. Brady has a, a breath of fresh air in our department. Uh, we have Odie Hall, who a lot of you have also dealt with. She's been in our department for quite some time. Connie Kinney, uh, who does our transportation network. And then Nicole Insweiler and Kristen Ripberger Hardy, they're two new ones to our team. So they're learning uh, from Brady and uh, Odie and Connie. So bear with, with them as they transition into their new roles. Voluntary services is, I, I like to joke around, I call us a spinal cord of DAV because we do everything there, all right? Membership supposedly the new lifeblood, don't worry about all that, all right? <laughs> but uh, anyways, uh, we do a lot, we, we have our hands in a little bit of everything, everything that you do in your community, everything that you do at the, at the VA Medical Center, it all just results to the figure you see on stage. I mean, we, we devoted almost $45 million to voluntary services. I mean, that's a, that's a huge number. And it's all thanks to each and every one of you in this room and everybody who couldn't make it here today. And you as volunteers obviously know how important it is to recruit and attain new volunteers. And all I ask of each of you is to try to bring one person on. And whether they can do it one day a month, two days a week, whatever, whatever their schedule fits. So I really need your help to encourage somebody to come in and volunteer their time. Most people are scared because when we make a commitment, we think we have to do it every day. And if they have the time to do it every day, that's great. But I, I know each and every one of you really loves volunteering. Um, I see some very dedicated volunteers in here. Uh, but I need your help. We need more volunteers, okay? So go back, go back to your homes and, and encourage someone to join up. Some of our programs uh, uh, consist of what's on the board here. Um, and I'm going to talk of, about them all. Uh, Local Veterans Assistance Program, LVAP. I know each and every one of you hear me talking about it, talking about it, talking about it. That's a little prize jewel that every one of you is doing something and you're not reporting it. And we're working to try to make that easier for you. So what you're doing in the communities uh, is great. Start tracking that stuff. Carry a little binder. Uh, make a note on your smartphone. You got a flip phone? Get rid of the flip phone. Get a smartphone, all right? <laughs> VAVS, um, it's opposite of LVAP. Basically, anything that you do at a VA medical center is VAVS. Everything you do outside the community can probably be covered under LVAP. Uh, VAVS consists of driving a vehicle, uh, being an information desk clerk, helping people around, transporting people from A to B at the VA medical centers, or just being a greeter, uh, walking around doing, uh, you know, stuffing bags for patients. Those type of things are VAVS. Our transportation network, that's the backbone right there, guys. Since 1987, we've done so much. Uh, again, we need your help to recruit people to drive vehicles. And I know I'm going to get a question today about the onboarding of volunteer drivers. We're working on it, all right? The Jesse Brown Youth Memorial Scholarship, each and every one of you back in your communities has a youth volunteering at the medical center. Guarantee it. Because most of these kids nowadays have to volunteer so many hours to graduate high school. Encourage them to sign up at DAV. I mean, we have a robust scholarship program. We give out $75,000 a year. That's a lot of money. Um, our celebrity entertainment program, uh, y'all saw Larry yesterday. Uh, he's been doing it for more than 40 years. Uh, when we're working on bringing on new people as well, but Jerry Lane, Larry Barnett, 
still travel to all the VA medical centers across the country and visit with patients. They do a wonderful job, and I tell you what, I've been with them both. You walk in the room, patients really light up. And a lot of times, they're the only people that are Larry or Jerry, the only ones they see for the day. Uh, and then, of course, DAV's best kept secret, the National Disabled Veterans Winter Sports Clinic. Very proud to co-host that event with the Department of Veterans Affairs and my counterpart, Teresa Parks, over there. Uh, it's a wonderful event. This year we had um, almost 340 participants at the event. Uh, it's a worthwhile endeavor, and if you don't know about it, ask me about it because I could talk to you about it till I'm blue in the face. Wonderful event. All right, LVAP. Well, since 2007, we've had more than 7,100 volunteers donate 2.7 million hours of their time. It is a very worthwhile event. That number ought to be so huge, my abacus has to get replaced with a calculator so I can tally that stuff up. You're, each and every one of you, again, is doing something in your communities that is LVAP, all right? A little bit more about that. Uh, some of the uh, categories that fall under that, you're, how many chapter service officers are in here? All right, all right, another quick, quick, quick trick question. How many of you are reporting those under LVAP? About half of you, right? Those are all things that you can, can track. Uh, how many of you done forget-me-not drives? All right, it's early. You all awake? How many of you are reporting them as LVAP? All right. Again, same number. Uh, anytime you're out promoting the organization, I know we have a new Drive for Your Community, a Ford event. How many of you have had one of those this year? Did you report it as LVAP? That's an opportunity. That's a missed opportunity. So those are all ways that you can track and get eligible for LVAP. And if you are volunteering through LVAP, you're eligible for uh, one of these fancy things Jim Shuey can hold up. Some of our volunteer incentives. I mean, you're, 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 you're eligible for all that. Same stuff, okay? We have the same levels. We want to recognize you for your, your volunteer opportunities. Again, more examples. Uh, there's 5Ks coming up around the country. How many of you got a 5K coming to your neck of the woods? That's an opportunity for you to capture every volunteer and report that under LVAP. And we do recognize you as a division leader. Uh, we want to bring you up on stage. And uh, who's in here from Virginia? We want to knock Virginia off of that, right, guys? Where's, where's California at? Come on, California. Y'all got to get it together, right? All right. Uh, Oklahoma. We got Oklahoma in here? Oklahoma. They really turn it up a notch. Um, Nebraska? Are you guys, uh, y'all stepped it up a bit. South Dakota? All right. Missouri? I recognize everybody now. All right, good. Boston, you got a 5K coming. You ready to, you ready to do it to it? All right, guys. Okay. I like it. There you go. He's aggressive. We'll see what they do next year. All right, VABS. Uh, you know, I talked a little bit about all this earlier. It's anything you're doing in the VA Medical Center. You don't have to be a driver. You can go in one day a week, hand out magazines, again, stuff bags. Um, it's, all, it, it's all relative. If you, you get your time in there, I'm a registered volunteer at the Cincinnati VA Medical Center. I, I go over and visit with patients as much as possible. All right, George H. Seal Award. This is something I really struggle with every year. Yes, sir. Absolutely. Absolutely. If you, when you leave your house and you start volunteering, by all means, start tracking your hours. Okay? Yeah. Well, then, then, if, then put it under the LVAP program. You're setting out the volunteer for the day, right? Boom. Work? All right. Um, the George H. Seal Award. I mean, we, we recognize the DAV and the DAVA Top Volunteer of the Year. I struggle every year to get people to be nominated for that, that award. So if you could work with your program managers 
If you can work with your department leaders about people who are doing things, recognize somebody for that award. There's almost 200 facilities across the country. I got 28 applications for that this year. 28. And for the auxiliary, I got three. Can you just forward that to me? That's that's bad, right? I mean, I, I need your help. So if you can take that back, help your program managers out, that'd be great. Yes, ma'am. All right, well, first of all, I don't need your last four on any of our forms. Okay, I know it's on there. I'm getting ready to change that. We're going to talk a little bit about a program that's coming out, the, the DAB360 project. I don't need anybody's last four on their social of their social security number, okay? It's, I'm concerned about your safety as well as mine. I know identity theft is happening day in, day out. Don't worry about that. Uh, skip over it. It's your last four. Yeah, yeah. I, she was talk, I thought she was talking about the LVAT form. Yeah, yeah well, I don't need that on the LVAT form. Okay, that's a, that's a DAV form, that's not a VA form, okay? Yes. It's coming off. It's not. You're just put in zero, 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 zero. All it requires is to be populated. Yep. Talking to the microphone, Jim. All that is required is that it be populated. It doesn't have to be correct. So you can put in, what I've done is put in zero, 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 zero. When I pull it up, I immediately know that that person is, you know, you know. How about email? So I set up, in my case, in Nebraska, I went into uh, Gmail and set up a Gmail account. LVAP.nebraska at gmail.com. There you put, go. Put that in there. That satisfies the system. It satisfies the LVAP system until we get to 360. So those, Correct. Those, yep. those, once, are, those are workarounds. Once we get to DAV 360, it will require a unique email address. You will not be able to do that any longer. You will have to have a, a different email address for each person because eventually with DAV 360, the volunteers will actually be able to log in. They won't be able to report their own hours, but they will be able to see what their hours are, change their own addresses, email addresses, things like that. So they will have to have one. I, and therefore you lose people. I will make a note of that and I'll talk to our, the folks who are actually implementing the system and see what we can do about that. I'm, I'm not sure. It's, 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 a, it's a valid concern, system. but like, how many of you still actually get a newspaper at home? How many of you, I, I'm actually surprised. I can't believe newspapers are still in production if you want to know the truth of the matter, so. <laughs> but, <laughs> hey. Truth be told, I love reading the newspaper too. But um, eventually, everybody's going to transition into an email. How many of you are on Facebook? Uh, that's my point right there. All right, you guys, a bunch of people on Facebook. All right, so you have the technology. I mean, it's it's there, and you need the capability to do it. So we're going to have to evolve with the times. I, I I don't mean that in a bad way. I mean, we technology. It's it's a way we can reach out and tell you things. As a volunteer, I want to make this more personal. Let him finish talking. You have an anniversary date, a birthday. I want, to, I want to shoot an email to you and say, hey, happy birthday. You're 99 years old. Uh, thanks for volunteering. I'm serious. I want to do those types of things. Got a question so, in the back. Oh, got a question? Yeah, what is the reporting period for that? For LVAP? Yeah. It's calendar year. So Janu January 1 to December 31. OK. okay. All right, uh, back to the George H. Seal. Uh, yes, Marianne. I understand. We'll take this. We'll take that back and take a look at it. Yes, Chris.
Well, you would have already registered as a volunteer at VA. They'd have all your information. So when you turn that into your, your HSC, your program manager, that's a different animal, OK? DAV will no longer require last four for anything that has to do with volunteering. Correct. We're, we're getting away from that. We're trying to, again, we're evolving with the times, right? I understand identity. Th What's that? For the riders? If that, that's an internal process you're using at VA, I, I'm not affiliated with that, OK? But back to George H. Seal, I need your help. You, if you're volunteering, don't be afraid to ask them to nominate you. If you're doing something, that it, I want to recognize you. So I, I'd love to get more than 28 applications is what I'm getting at. I really need your help with that, okay? The Transportation Network Program. Again, I, I, I love talking about this. You know, last year we provided more than 711,000 rides to veterans. Uh, to and from their appointments. Uh, we've had some complications in the past where VA or DAV Transportation Network and the, the, the VA Transportation Service, VTN, VTS. Those programs were designed to complement each other. They should work hand in hand. If you have a veteran who is non-transferable, that means they, they cannot get in and out of the vehicle with minimal assistance, they should be eligible for the VTS. Um, uh, and we've had some problems in Florida that we worked out, and I think things are getting much better down in Florida. Am I right? All right. So, so if you're having problems in your community, please reach out and let me know. And I think he can attest to this. Uh, I will make a phone call, and we can get it resolved relatively quick. Am I right? Absolutely. All right. <laughs> um, some more statistics there. I just talked about the number of veterans we provided uh, transportation to. The Jesse Brown Youth Memorial Scholarship, I love this program. Uh, we're working hard to uh, promote it. I have a poster. If you're interested in getting a poster to take out to your facility, uh, shoot me an email. Give me a phone call. Talk to Brady. Uh, she doesn't do anything on the day anyway, so she'd be glad to talk with you. Uh, <laughs> there's a really nice poster that we put out. Uh, it's in, it's in, it really promotes our scholarship and it promotes volunteerism as a whole. It's, it, it doesn't focus on one thing. But these, these young, young men and women at the hospital don't realize that we have this, this money to give. Um, I've asked for your help each and every year to get more applications. And this year I'm proud to say we received over 50 applications. We went from 25 the year before to over 50. So we doubled our efforts. I need your help again. Again, there's almost 200 medical facilities across the country and not counting everything that they can do under the LVAP program that makes them eligible for the scholarship. Uh, encourage volunteerism. Get these kids signed up as volunteers so they can get them eligible for the scholarship. Marianne? Well, that's really where I want you as a VAVS rep or dep to talk to these kids, walk around promoting our scholarship program. But also, like Marianne said, work with your chief. Tell your chief there that, uh, or the program manager, whoever's doing the orientation about the scholarship so they can talk about it. At Cincinnati, when a kid walks in and they want to volunteer, that program manager says, you need to sign for, for DAV. They have a scholarship program that's phenomenal. So uh, that's happening at a lot of those facilities. Heck, Nebraska had, uh, in Lincoln, they had two siblings that won the scholarship uh, a year apart. And the top recipient this year, sister, won it two years ago. So that, those are kids that are really giving back. Yes, Lenny? We can, we can put youth in the LVAP yeah, Absolutely, absolutely. <clears throat> Again, we talked a little bit about the Celebrity Entertainment Program and Jerry and Larry. I'm not gonna talk about that much more, but it's a wonderful program. Hopefully you've had the opportunity to a visit with them or meet with them. All right, the prize jewel of DAV, the National Disabled Veterans Winter Sports Clinic. Um, this event happens every year. We've been, this last year was our 30th year, three decades we've done this event with the VA. It is a wonderful, worthwhile endeavor. Do I have anybody in here who's participated in the Winter Sports Clinic? It's changed your life, didn't it? Got you. Did I see another one back there? Yep, that Jim Sersley? Yeah. Good to see you, Jim. 
Uh, it is a wonderful event. That winter, the Winter Sports Clinic really changes people's lives. Uh, on the first day they roll in, they're real timid, reluctant to get involved in it, pretty down and out. I mean, uh, I, that's what I see. Uh, about day three, they're up at five o'clock in the morning to get breakfast and they're ready to get them on the mountain. So it's a, it's a wonderful event. And um, I just like to say to everybody in here, if, you're, if your chapter, your department, uh, supported it at DAV, thank you so much. It's, it's, it's greatly appreciated and we continue to find new ways to promote this event. Question. Where are we at? Yes, sir. All right, thanks. Um, again, this event is put together with us in the VA, and we're very proud to, to boast our relationship. Um, the VA has six of these types of events. Uh, the Winter Sports Clinic is just one that DAV co-hosts, and I'm not going to talk about any of the others because this one is the best. All right. Again, I talked a little bit about 5Ks earlier. If you got a 5K coming to your community, it's a great opportunity for you to track LVAP. I, there's multiple departments in here. I need your support. I need you to get involved with the LVAP program, start tracking those hours and reporting them. 